Okay, this is the second video in our electricity and electronics series. The previous video was about how electricity is electrons moving through some medium like a wire. So we want to uh, barrel down a little deeper into these moving electrons. I found your electrons very moving. All right, so let's talk a little bit about those electrons. So let's first of all say that like charges repel and opposite charges attract. So protons, we said in the previous video, were in the nucleus, uh, and they have a positive charge. Um, and then you've got these, if you think of it like a solar system, that's not quite right, but it, it'll get us going. If you think of the electrons as being planets in a solar system, you think of the, the protons and the neutrons in the nucleus as being like the sun in the solar system. So the, the electrons have this, this kind of negative charge out here, and then the protons in the nucleus have a positive charge. And the fact that the protons have a positive charge and the electrons have a negative charge, kind of, it holds it all together. Um, you might say, well, why don't the protons go flying apart because light charges repel? That's an excellent question, and I'm glad you asked that. It's because of something called the strong nuclear force. But that's not important right now. By the way, all these forces are, are really well balanced. It's like, it's like there's a god or something you know, that designed it all. Because if it was a little different on any of these variations, I wouldn't be here torturing you, and none of this would exist. It, it is exactly balanced just right. Uh, it's a Goldilocks universe we live in here. But anyway, the protons have a positive charge in the nucleus, and the electrons have a negative charge. And the, the protons should repel each other, but they're glued together by the strong nuclear force, and the electrons are attracted to the nucleus um, because the negative and the positive opposite charges um, they attract. Okay, so this is a... a attempt to draw kind of a copper uh, atom. It's not an accurate copper atom. The, the, this is the solar system picture, and that's not exactly right. Remember I said Cu stands for copper. You might have said, well, why not Co for copper? Well, that was taken, cobalt. That's based on the Latin. None of that's important right now. But basically, I think the atomic number, I should have looked this up, I think the atomic number of copper is like 29 or something like that. If that's true, let's hope I'm true, uh, on that. There are 29 protons uh, in the nucleus. And then I think there are a few more than 29 uh, neutrons in the normal copper. But basically, this has a net, uh, a positive charge, let's say plus 29, you know, in there. You don't need to know all these things to be able to, you know, do electricity stuff. But the electrons are in layers. So some electrons are closer to the nucleus than others. Again, this isn't exactly right. It's like half right or maybe three quarters right. So <clears throat> what you'll see is, is that the ones that are farther away from the nucleus, they can be dislodged. So if this is positive, it's, it's really pulling on the electrons that are close to it. But this one electron way out here in the outer shell, it is not nearly as, as tightly held by the negative by the positive charge of the nucleus as say this one or or this one and so this one out here can be dislodged and so when 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 a copper uh atom loses an electron uh it becomes less negative right um which means it becomes positive um and so what happens is is when 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 that extra uh when that that final electron out there is dislodged it becomes what's called an ion when electrons are added or removed from an atom uh, the atom takes on an electric charge. So if uh, if this one goes away, it becomes less negative because it lost a negative electron. So it becomes less negative, meaning it becomes positive. It becomes a positive ion if that electron goes away. So that this process of becoming an ion is called ionization. I mean, man, I can't. That's just crazy that they would call it ionization. Anyway, it become it's called ionization. When electrons are added or removed and it becomes it takes on electric charge and it becomes an ion now what we call an atom's ionization potential that's the amount of energy it takes to dislodge that or to or to gain they can also some atoms gain some gain some tend to gain gain electrons some tend to give away electrons uh, copper is one that tends to give away electrons so copper becomes either plus one or plus two uh, there's a different ways that uh, that it can go, but but basically the uh, if you think of playing pool, you know what? How much energy do I have to put on the cue ball to knock that electron out? That's the ionization potential, the amount of energy it takes uh, to cause ionization. Now the thing is, the random drift of electron that doesn't create current. 
Um, that, that's not what makes electricity flow. In order for electricity to flow, it's going to need a push. And we're going to get to that. Voltage is the push, I would say. Um, but we will talk about that soon enough in a later video. This has been uh, Moving Electrons, our second video in our Electricity and Electronics series.